today. It is close to spring break and it's very cold. Back to the vlog, I thought I would update it. As you can tell, I'm getting a cold, trying to get over it. But it's been a crazy couple weeks. So today we are trying to play a game of trash get ball modified with a helmet or a helmet basketball goal <laughs> and everyone's laughing at me so is made complete it's the last day of the week we have a teacher work day tomorrow and I'm exhausted so it's gonna be a much needed break even though it is a teacher work day it is a break from the norm a um, little less stress maybe get some work done get some things accomplished get ready for the last couple weeks before spring break which is coming so I put a challenge up for my students to get a certain percentage on their benchmarks and if they did that I would shave my beard. So this might be the last time we see my beard for a little bit. Well, sad to say, I'll have to part with my beard this weekend. My students had a goal to reach for their benchmark and they reached it. Therefore, I must comply. Here's what it's looking like right now. But we're about to move all of these desks. So I just mopped a little bit, kind of get the floor cleaned up. Now we're gonna get everything so back So it's in. teacher work day here at my school. So I came in today just to get some stuff done, get some house cleaning, um, some other things in order. So I think it's gonna be a good So day. I'm working on getting a few things done, getting my class set up uh, for the rest of the year. Hopefully I won't have to change again, but I'm trying to get the desk situated uh, probably I don't know the fifth time just to make sure and ensure that I am adequately um, teaching I am meeting every student's goals every student's needs trying to keep them focused but also being able to work in small group work independently um, it's really just a logistical thing for me I, I like having everyone in a certain space um, doesn't always work out like that but we're gonna see and we're gonna try so by the way if you didn't know already uh, the beards coming off so next vlog I will not have a beard so I can get used to that it's so pretty just kidding so one huge takeaway for me this week and so far this year is that students really need a structured loving but strict classroom setting to succeed adequately I think that doesn't mean to be angry, it doesn't mean to be grumpy all the time, it just means that there needs to be those set standards and uh, strategies and <clears throat> expectations in place at the beginning of the year for students to actually succeed and to progress. Now, I feel like I've captured that with my students. I think that there's a lot of work that I need to do for next year and for the rest of this year, but I think coming in next year, I will have a better understanding of how all that works, um, things not to do and things to do. So I've kind of made a little list um, <clears throat> in my journal just to kind of get me or keep me on track for next year. So hopefully, uh, you know, I won't have some of the issues that I had this year, which this is a great group of students. It's just, there's some things that I could have probably done at the beginning to help me to not be so stressed by certain things and also to keep them focused and on point uh, throughout the year so that we can progress more rapidly throughout the year and also so that we can get more accomplished, I think, 
in a smaller amount of time. And that translates to the test scores, obviously, I think, but also it translates to being able to do more things with them, uh, being able to have the freedom to say, okay, here's an assignment, I'm gonna set you free on it, let me see what you can do. Because some of the students that I have, I think, struggle with that, and that's no fault of their own, and it's not a, a bad thing, it's just, I think that sometimes the things that I give them, they're kind of like, well, I don't really know what to do with this, so, like, that's where some of them can have behavior issues, or some of them can just have, you know, just get frustrated because they're like, I don't really know what to do. Mr. Abey's not teaching us. I, I can't figure it out. So, and I don't want to just say, okay, here's the information all the time because then they're not really learning. Um, I mean, I think that they want, I think they need to discover stuff on, my, on their own personally. And so that's kind of my viewpoint on education is let's front load it. Okay, now let's see what you can do. Or even, here's the thing, what can you do with it? If you can't do anything with it, let's go teach it, then come back to it and see what you can do with it after that. Teaching is such an organic thing and it's really uh, a huge learning process for me as a beginning teacher, um, which I'm in my second year. But it's also just a huge, there's so many different components and since I teach all subjects, that's even tougher because I have to keep up with what do they know about reading? Well, if the reading level is lower, then they're just gonna have a, they're gonna have a hard time with word problems, or they're gonna have a hard time with science. Uh, not always. Some students thrive in science, but they have a hard time with reading and math. Um, a lot of students have a hard time with writing because I don't think that they write a lot in the other grades as much as they could. But I want to make it fun so that they're not bored and so they're not like, oh my gosh, I just. I know there's some of them that probably feel that way, but I still care about them. So our next big benchmark, which is our last benchmark, is the science benchmark coming up. So I'm trying to think about different strategies, games, processes to help them to understand and to remember and recall and retain the information needed to um, adequately, adequately, I can't even talk adequately, but to adequately um, get a decent score on this. Um, not because I care about scores, but I care about their um, understanding, first and foremost. Um, but I also care about them persevering, because I know sometimes it can be stressful if you're not doing well on assessments and benchmarks, and you can kind of give up. But I don't want them to give up, because I know that all of them can get through it. I know that all of them can do a great job, and I believe in all of them, and I hope they know that and I hope they know I care about them and I hope they know that I love being in here with them every day. I'm actually missing them today. Um, it is nice to not have to be stressed out about teaching today and uh, being on as a teacher today, but uh, I still kind of do miss them. So uh, that's gonna be hard at the end of the year cause they're my buddies. And I got a fidget spinner, don't tell them. This is gonna be a short vlog. Um, I'm gonna kind of wrap it up now, but um, I really appreciate anyone who watches and listens. Um, I know some of my students watch it, uh, some possibly some people on YouTube or teachers watch it. Um, but anyways, I appreciate the support. Uh, I hope that um, it helps a teacher who is coming up. So I'm going to try to promote it for BTs and um, student teachers who are coming into the profession. Uh, I'm 39. I came into it last year when I was 38. Uh, it is difficult, it is challenging, but it's very rewarding. and. Uh, if you watch any of my other previous videos, you'll kind of see like what I've gone through. Still got a lot to go through um, to move forward, but uh, I have learned so much in this year, um, more than probably the three years I did in college, which that prepared me for this, but I learned so much more in the classroom for a whole year this year than uh, I could probably ever learn in any other situation. It is very, very different than student teaching. It is very different than what you learn in college. Those things are skills and tools that you can apply and help you, but the overall process is very uh, difficult at first. So I won't say it's a cakewalk. Uh, maybe for some of you it might be, but for me it's not because I'm very one-track minded and this is a definitely a all hands on deck, multitasking type job. I don't like to say job, but career, whatever you want to call it. Um, I love it. Uh, I love the challenge. I work more hours now than I've ever worked in a day or a week anywhere else. Um, but I, I enjoy it 
Um, and so, but you have to, you know, you have to break free in the afternoons. You have to kind of like re decompose or decompose. You don't have to decompose. That would be weird because then you would not exist anymore. You have to decompress uh, at the end of the day. You have to kind of detach yourself because it will basically take over your mind all hours of the day, all hours of the night, if you let it. Sometimes that's a good thing, sometimes it's not a good thing. So anyways, that's my wisdom, words of wisdom. Um, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram, uh, YouTube, subscribe if you like the channel. Um, give me a thumbs up. Also, if you uh, hit the little bell at the top, it'll give you notifications when I post a new video, which I try, I'm gonna try to do again weekly. I know I have kind of gotten away from that, but um, also if you're not on Twitter, get on Twitter if you're an educator. There are so many resources, so many great teachers and educators out there, and I think that it is one of the best things that I've done as an educator. It's helped me through a lot of stress. It's helped me through a lot of questions that I have about myself um, and about the education system. So I have faith in it. I believe in it. I think that our education system could be way better sometimes, but I think that we are making it awesome every day. So all the educators around the world, you're awesome. I believe in you. Hope you believe in me. Um, have a great week or weekend or whenever you watch this. And I will see you next week.